Welcome everyone to our first QA forum of 2022. I'm Dr. Michael Novick, the Director of Education and Associate Director of Quality Assurance for VRAD. As always, we will do four 15-minute segments for this QA forum, and in the first segment, we'll review a few of the concepts we talked about last year, namely satisfaction of search errors and search pattern errors, which I think are two areas that are fairly easy to address when it comes to imaging interpretation errors. Our usual bookkeeping, which you are free to read if you'd like to pause the lecture, and the learning objectives for this section. With that, let's dive right into the cases. Our first patient is an 84-year-old woman with abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. These are axial images from a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis. Of course, if you were reading this in real time, you would be scrolling up and down the various sections as you engage your search pattern. For the purposes of this lecture, I will scroll down and then back up so you can see all the relevant pathology. These are the coronal images from the same contrast enhanced scan. Again, I will scroll backward and forward once. Of course, if there's something you'd like to scrutinize further, you can always pause the lecture and take a look. There are several findings to discuss in this case, the first here in the right upper quadrant in the proximal transverse colon near the hepatic flexure. There is a localized area of irregular colonic wall thickening and luminal narrowing. The second finding is also in the right upper quadrant visualized here on this coronal image. You can see here the common bile duct is dilated up to 11 millimeters and there is abrupt cutoff distally. But there is a third, no less important finding, albeit subtle, in the right kidney. You can see how subtle and easy to miss this finding would be even without the satisfaction of search pitfall we face having already made two important findings in this case. It's frankly even more subtle on the coronal images. Perhaps a bit less so on the sagittal reformatted images. I think this case really underscores the importance of sticking to your search pattern and not becoming distracted once you've made important findings, and also to utilize the coronal and sagittal reformatted images in every case and request them if you don't have them. Our next patient is a 62-year-old woman who is unable to bear weight after a fall. These are axial images from a CT scan of the knee with the bone windows on. There are some soft tissue findings here we'll discuss, and I think you can even see them with the bone windows on, but these windows are the most important for this case. Let's have a look at the coronal images from the same study, also with the bone windows on. We can see three findings on this single axial image. The first being a very subtle cortical step off along the medial aspect of the medial femoral condyle. The second being this chronic deformity along the lateral patellar facet. Just a reminder here that as radiologists, we're expected to make all the findings and not really make a determination about whether they're important enough to include in the report. In this case, this is not an actionable finding, but someone might see this and question whether or not this is an acute fracture. So it's important to note in the report. With the soft tissue windows on, I'm sure you can all appreciate the hemarthrosis. This is probably in fact a lipohemarthrosis, which would tip you off to the underlying fracture had you not seen it on the bone windows. 
Of course, if you stop there and fail to scrutinize the rest of the images, as all of us have done at one point or another, you would miss the very subtle subchondral fracture along the posterior aspect of the lateral tibial plateau. It's essentially invisible on the axial images, but perhaps a little easier to see on the coronal. and the sagittal images. Trust me, I know how difficult it is to avoid these kinds of misses, but I think if you make your diagnosis and you just ask yourself before signing the report, have I looked at everything, you can really go a long way toward avoiding these kinds of mistakes. Our next patient is a 62-year-old man with a diabetic foot. We'll begin with this sagittal fluid sensitive sequence. Remember to pause if you need to scrutinize any of the single images. Here is the corresponding T1 weighted sequence. Remember, these images are excellent for confirming osteomyelitis with the telltale T1 hypointensity. They're also really good for fractures. As we discussed last time around, these cases can be especially challenging when there are changes of Charcot neuropathy as there are in this case. And certainly no one would blame you for patting yourself on the back for finding this small non-displaced fracture along the undersurface of the second metatarsal base. With some associated bone marrow edema. This is, of course, an important finding, but we must scrutinize all of the images on all of the sequences before we can sign this report and move on with our lives. Lo and behold, we have some additional pathology here in the distal phalanx. There is a soft tissue ulceration abutting the distal phalangeal head with some subjacent phlegmonish change. There is increased T2 signal in the distal phalanx with the classic associated T1 hypointensity of osteomyelitis. So this is in fact a case of acute osteomyelitis with an incidental fracture of the metatarsal base. There's also chronic deformity here of the proximal phalanx, which you should also mention. Here's the excellent reference article I used for the recent osteomyelitis lecture I gave. Okay, our next patient is a 16-year-old boy status post-facial trauma. Here are the axial images from a CT scan of the facial bones. These are the bone windows. Never forget to look at the soft tissue windows as well. You'll find important findings frequently on those images. In fact, here I think you can see the soft tissue injury above the left orbit. These are the sagittal images from the same study. I find these especially useful for alveolar ridge fractures, which can be invisible on the other sequences. This is a single axial image from the inferior portion of the field of view. There is a linear lucency in the C2 vertebra. It's very important to note that this fracture extends to the transverse foramen. That way the referring clinicians can evaluate for clinical signs and symptoms of vertebral artery injury. Here is a sagittal view of our finding. 
and you can see that the fracture line extends to the atlantoaxial articulation. So this is a C2 fracture. It's not terribly subtle, but you'll miss it 100% of the time if you don't look at the cervical spine on CT scans of the facial bones. You should also, by the way, look at the brain parenchyma, especially in cases where a head CT has not been ordered concurrently. Next up is a 35-year-old man with abdominal pain and a history of appendiceal adenocarcinoma. Let's scan through the axial images from a contrast-enhanced CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis. There are multiple findings to appreciate in this case. We'll focus on just a few. Let's start with the lower chest. There is prominent esophageal wall thickening and mural edema. You might be inclined to call this loculated ascites at first glance, but these are in fact mucinous metastatic implants. Of course, we're talking about satisfaction of search, so you know we're not done yet. There is a left lower lobe arterial filling defect. And again, this is not necessarily a subtle finding, but you'll miss it 100% of the time if you don't put on your soft tissue windows and take a look at the lung bases in every abdomen and pelvis CT. So this is a left lower lobe PE in a patient with known malignancy. I think cases like this are so, so important. I include them frequently in these lectures because we can learn so much from one case. If you just include the lung bases, it doesn't take a long time to do it. Every CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis, just put on the soft tissue windows and take a look at the lung bases and you will never miss this finding. Our final patient is a 55-year-old woman with bilateral flank pain suspected of having a kidney stone. These are the axial images from a non-contrast CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis. the coronal images from the same patient. Of course, your attention is going to be drawn to the kidneys, the ureters, and the urinary bladder in a case like this, but don't forget to engage your search pattern. And even if you do a quick look, start over from the beginning and make sure to look at everything. Even though we were more focused on the urinary tract, I'm sure many of you noticed the enlarged spleen. And of course, the absence of nephrolithiasis or obstructive uropathy. The important finding though was hidden in the left iliac wing, visible primarily on the bone windows. There is a destructive permeative lytic lesion in the left iliac wing. Consistent with malignancy. So always remember to put the bone windows on. I frequently start with the sagittal images to look for degenerative changes and compression fractures, but look on all the different series with the bone windows on so you don't miss findings like this in the future. I've referenced this article in the past. It's excellent when it comes to interpretive error in radiology. Thanks for joining me. I will see you for our next segment uh, next week. Thank you so much.